Ever notice how apps like Zillow or Redfin can predict the price of a house? The secret lies in machine learning. And in this video, I will guide you through the process of building your very own housing pricing model from scratch. We will be using Azure Machine Learning, which is a cloud platform that can accelerate and manage the machine learning project lifecycle. Let's dive in and unlock the power of predictive analytics together using Azure Machine Learning and VS Code. Here, I have a CSV file containing housing data in the state of California. Some of the columns include the location of the house, number of rooms, and age of house. Our goal is to build a machine learning model that can predict the price of a house given its details. To get started with using the extension, head to the Azure Machine Learning Studio page under the Compute section, pick any one of your compute instances and launch directly into VS Code Web or Desktop, whichever you prefer. Once inside VS Code, with the extension installed and logged into your Azure account, clicking on the Azure icon on the left will bring up a tree view of your Azure resources. Under the Machine Learning tab, you can choose your subscription and see all the resources that you have access to. From here, you can create new resources directly in VS Code using YAML files. One benefit of using VS Code is that IntelliSense support is built into these YAML files, so you do not have to memorize the values or look up documentation. Clicking on the Azure ML icon on the top right will automatically create the resources for you, and it will be reflected in the tree view and Azure ML Studio. Now, let's jump into model training and we will take a look at this Python script file. For this project, we're going to use a random forest model. Essentially, a random forest is like having a team of experts, which are trees in this case, who each give their opinion, and you can pick the outcome with either the majority vote or the average, depending on the situation. Each tree is unique because it is built with a subset of the training data. To do this, we will use the sklearn module which is a Python library dedicated to machine learning tasks. We will also use MLflow, which is a library for managing the lifecycle of a machine learning project to keep track and log our runs. MLflow has built-in support with Azure ML, so the runs and logs will be automatically stored in Azure ML. With the setup step done, we can start training the model with the training file that you saw earlier. We will use the following command to ask Azure ML to do the training step. Depending on the hardware of the compute and the method you choose to train the model, it may take some time to complete the training step. Some models take a really long time to complete. Did you know that it took 34 days to train ChatGPT and cost nearly $5 million? Once the training is complete, you can view the results of the run in Azure ML Studio under the Jobs tab with a corresponding experiment name and display name. It will show the metrics, parameters, and the resulting model of the training job. At this point, you can continue to iterate until you are satisfied with the model. Now that we've tested the model and we liked our results, we want to deploy this model so we can build an app with it. We first need to register the model with Azure ML, which creates a snapshot of your model and saves it. Then we need to deploy the model to an API endpoint. In order to create and deploy an endpoint, you will need to specify a compute instance and a Python environment for the endpoint to run on. You will also need a scoring file, which is a script that will run after a request is made to the endpoint. After waiting for a few minutes, the endpoint is deployed and ready for consumption. To test this endpoint, we can send a request with some sample housing data in JSON format and receive back the predicted price of the house. And now, we have successfully deployed and tested a machine learning model that we built ourselves. Building a machine learning model isn't nearly as complex as you might think if you got a service like Azure ML. It is mostly about having the right tools and knowing which models to start with. So now that you know how to do it, what kind of model would you build? What would you do with it? Let us know in the comments below. Check out the links in the description box for additional resources. And as always, happy coding.